Okay, so today we have a special guest and we're going to be talking all about Etsy and online selling. And we have Jean de Summer who's here and I'm so excited that you decided to join us today and to give us some of your pearls of wisdom. I know that a lot of people here are creatives or maybe even some of them have an online store already and are just wanting to know how to level it. So do you want to tell us a little bit about you, Jean de, maybe introduce yourself and how you started in this space and where you were to where you are now? Oh, and you're on, on mute, Jean de. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I started after my son was born because I couldn't find a job. And then I was like, maybe I need to stay home. And it just went from one thing to another where I was finding my passion again and I loved what I was doing. And so I started to sell on Etsy. Um, definitely have gone through many different struggles and um, avenues with selling online. And just in the last 10 years, I've really found what I loved. So I now just sell artwork and I do um, all sorts of different fun personalized items and uh, like quotes and all sorts of things. And I have just found where selling online is really where it's at right now for me. Um, it creates you know, a, a great uh, schedule for me and my son, my son's autistic. And now seeing my, my path, I really see like, oh, this is exactly what I needed to do. He was diagnosed at like three and a half. And so um, I was just getting started with business. And now it's, I've been able to be a mom and to really be there for him. So Really, it's turned into a passion to be exactly where I need to be in life and to to support my family, my little family, my son. And but, I and I love where you are now. You've actually had a lot of success with your business too. So you're yeah, not only an autism mama, which I love. I love that that's part of like how you introduce yourself, but you've been doing this for 12 years and you've shipped over 200,000 packages since you started. Is that right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Yeah, that's I'm like best friends with the post office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I think a lot of people are in, in the place where you started mm -hmm. and wanting to figure out how to get from where they are to where you mm -hmm. are. So I would love to ask a few questions about that, if you don't mind, like how people, how everybody here can potentially have similar experiences that you are. So first of all, tell us about why digital selling, why is this even an important or, or, or a space that people would want to entertain getting into? So I see it as I make it once and I keep selling it over and over. So um, I do the work, I guess it's really, you do the work once and then you keep, you keep selling it. I feel like digital is definitely the, the what has been the, I guess it's not really the future because it's been going on for a while, but I just, I feel that it's, I create my own timeline where it's, I create something and I um, release it to the world. Um, on my terms and I can create and keep creating um, and selling on multiple avenues as well oh. with a, one digital product. <clears throat> so awesome. I see it as like I created one thing and it's selling for a lifetime. I love that. And I've heard you say before that you, you think that everybody can be creative. So to, can you tell us a little mm -hmm. bit more about that, that maybe somebody here is like, I think being on Etsy would be amazing, but I am not creative. How would you, what would you say to those people? I think um, being creative, everybody has that. Everybody is a little creative and they might not see it as creativity, but if you really start zoning in on the things that you like, there's going to be creativity that stems from something from that. Um, I just, I feel like creativity is such a big word where people are like, oh, well, I don't draw or I can't sing or so I just feel like everybody has it. You, we were born with that. Yeah. So for yeah. those that are not, don't consider themselves artsy, maybe they can't draw like, like maybe mm -hmm. you do. What, what could they sell on Etsy? Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's so much. I, I also, I, there's like, oh, uh, it's not really a rabbit hole, but there's just so much things where I feel like somebody, for example, somebody likes to clean and organize or, you know, like there's a lot of moms that really are organized and have, have like a good system in their home. They, I feel, and I, 
I see this too with a lot of moms where they have seen a gap in the market where they're like, hey, we don't have this kind of a meal planner or we don't have these grocery lists or there's, um, let's say for instance, like a, just like a life planner, really a home planner. The, there are plenty of those um, opportunities out there that really what I've seen and noticed is there's a gap in the market for a product it can be digital and that you can really create a lot of success with things that are missing really. Um, so when I start looking for a new product to sell, I'm not looking at like, Oh, what is everybody else selling? I'm looking at what is missing, what can help, what can be like one of those new life hacks. So from um, being creative to creating art, of course, or like I, I love quotes. I love a good quote because I feel like there's motivation lacking in the world. So anybody and everybody can always use like something that gets them awake in the morning or, or helps them throughout the day. That's where I started. And then I just see all these other things that people are creating. Um, I know there's, you can just Google, like what's the best thing to sell right now and eBooks and education. Like if you are an educator or a teacher and there's things that are lacking out there in the digital world that can be created. And, and I, I just, I love that there's such a huge opportunity when it comes to digital. Yeah. And one of the things I love too, with selling online is that I think sometimes we think that we have to be the ones to ultimately create everything that we're, mm -hmm. we're selling, but I know that a big strategy, and I don't know if you do this, Shonda, cause you, you personally do a lot of your own artwork and everything, but hiring somebody on Fiverr one time to create, help you to create an ebook or to create, you know, a, a small graphic that it ultimately becomes a bigger graphic or something like that. And then you pay them once maybe 10 to $25, but then you can sell it over and over and over again um, on, on Etsy. Do you do any of that or have you, is that a strategy that you follow too? Yeah. Well, you helped me hire and my awesome person, my VA who actually, I give her the listings and she puts them on all the different platforms that I do. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I just finally was like, I need some help. I have so many things that I can get out there. I really need some help doing this. So that's one thing I have definitely learned is um, looking for help, um, working smarter, not harder, where I can find um, like a template online or an ad that's already made and I just need to change the information. And so I have seen definitely where I um, can get help from other people and they're and, and their expertise where I don't feel like, oh, I need to master this before I decide I can make some Pinterest ads or an online template. So I definitely am looking for resources and help with other people um, that have already created. It's already out there. So um, I feel like that it's an opportunity to save your mind and save your time in being the in the things that you do best when you're looking out and finding resources that help you. I love that. And I've heard you say before that you have one of your key strategies is copy and compare. Can you tell me what that, what that actually involves? So I think um, that that's like one of the, the things that we do when you're thinking of artistic um, that, oh, this person's better or that mm -hmm. I will never be that. I can never be the, the master of that. Um, I think we see ourselves as comparing um, our weaknesses to somebody else's strengths, um, copying and comparing where um, we feel that we have to be exact what we already see in the market to be successful. And I think it's almost the opposite of that. It's we need to find those um, opportunities that are missing and not being the exact same as the next person. So I feel like copying and comparing is one of those things you really have to keep in check of um, making it your own, not copying somebody and quit comparing yourself to other people and their expertise. Because if you keep trying, you're going to be there too. Somebody else is going to come to a point where they're comparing themselves to you and looking at your things being inspired. So I just think that that's, that's just one thing to watch out for it and almost like immediately dismiss um, pretty much when it, when it comes to being creative. And I think that's so true because people almost look at other, other stores on Etsy or creative market and get really overwhelmed. It's like, wow, it's so beautiful. It's so great. I can never measure, measure up to what they're doing. So I'm just going to, going to back off completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love, I love that. 
So tell me a little bit more about, you know, all everybody here, if they wanted to get started on one of these platforms today, what would be your, your top like tips to get going? Maybe because I know you actually sell on more than just Etsy. You sell on, is it five different platforms that you sell on? Yeah, I sell on the, the main ones. I definitely, I love creative market Etsy. Mm -hmm. um, I sell with a deal website called Jane. Um, I sell technology um different phone cases and different tech accessories. So I sell my patterns and my illustrations on all sorts of different companies. And then there's even the print on demand companies that are out there that um, I'm selling on there too. There's, it's endless. It really can be. And it really is like, I've just focused on a five because of my time capacity really where it, it, all these things that I am creating can immediately go onto another platform also. That's why I love digital because it's not something that's physical that you have to keep working on every single time to yeah. make it sell. So you sell on Jane, Creative Market, Etsy, and you mentioned a few like digital print. Do you sell on any other online stores? Yeah, so I sell on Society6 and Redbubble. I sell with a company called Casetify. Um, there's a few other, there's a uh, tea public there's, uh, and then of course you can start your own site with, um, I, I work with a company called printify where really all you're doing is uploading your graphic to hundreds of items where again, it's their printing and they're shipping it for you. And all you're doing is creating, um, the, the digital and, and then getting it out to your customers. So there's even that whole other avenue there too. Do you know what I love about this is that I'm efficiency is like what I'm always thinking of, like, how can I make this the most efficient thing possible? Yep. And it really is like you're creating it one time and then just putting it on multiple different platforms. I know that was your big stressor before you hired is like, I know that if I could just have someone take this one thing that I've already created, just put it on all the platforms I'm selling it on, that would be so helpful. So, so what would you tell back to my original question, someone who wants to get started, let's just say, start with Etsy or creative market. What would you tell them? and that they should probably do first steps? I think the first step is finding what you love. Like what, what is the thing that you are willing to put some time and effort into? Um, have some sort of connection to the thing that you are, you are really wanting to start selling and getting out to the world. I feel like there are things that are lacking in the world that we are ready um, as creatives to start filling up the world with. Um, I would definitely start with what are your strengths? What are you liking to do? If you could spend 40 hours in one week in the, you know, doing just this, what is it? Um, there are so many different things that people are coming up with. Uh, and then they also think, well, this isn't creative. Well, then I feel like if you dissect it a little bit more, you do find that there are some, there's so much creativity that's behind this thing that you love. Um, so really that I know for a fact, the hardest thing is like pinpointing, what am I going to start with? Um, I do an exercise where, where I list a bunch of things that are in my mind of like, what should I do next? I will make a list of like 10 or 20 things. Then I zoom it down to only two or then, then from those two, I think of the different varieties. I can come up with these two fun, the topics that I love. And then I go from there. Um, I feel like people just getting started, they think of, oh, I need to come up with a shop name. I need, who am I selling? I need to make sure my mom loves this because she's going to be my first customer. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of people that think my family's not buying this from me, so it must not be great. That's the other thing too, is that relying on the world for your market and not your little family. Um, I got over that quickly. I was like, Ooh, my mom will love this. I'm, and some of the people, I'm not kidding. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is another reality. I have, I have a huge family. I probably have like four of my siblings. I have no idea that I even have an online job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. So, so finding the market, finding your people outside of your little bubble is one thing, finding what you really can spend some time on, um, because again, it's your, it's your passion. You're going to do, you're going to do this for a long time. You're going to love to dig in on your spare, in your spare time. Um, when the kids are asleep or this is going to be what you're doing for, well, I, I love it. So I'm, it's not yeah. work to me, which 
which I'm glad that when people are like, what do you do for work? I'm like, well, <laughs> nothing really. <laughs> I but play. what I do for fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So what are, what are some things people should know then about Etsy? I know that there are some, some things to know before you even create your own Etsy shop. Um, maybe how much, how much do they take out of your store and how, how do you keep it going so that it's, how do you, how do you reach people? How do you make it effective? Or do you, should you have a certain number of items ready in your shop before you launch? What, how would you get started there? Yeah, those are awesome questions because it, it comes up every time people are like, why is my Etsy shop failing? Um, listings, I would say definitely start with at least a hundred. Um, that's why I'd love, like you take one idea and you create varieties of it. So listing of at least a hundred just to get, um, the, your things out there. So when you create a new listing, there is, um, it, it puts you in the top mm -hmm. and then your listing, it, it, it changes within minutes. Etsy is so huge right now. Um, it, it's so hard to even keep track. But there, there definitely is the fees, which, um, man, you think of you're paying somebody to do something. I would pay Etsy to do my marketing any day. There's a lot of people that think, oh, they're taking so much out. Um, I can't, it, like, I'm not making much of a profit. Of course, you definitely want to be pricing items that are, um, that are covering these fees. Um, Etsy still is the, the best market place with the fees. Um, I know some people might argue, but I feel like when it comes down to that, their marketing team is spot on there that I feel like there's also, um, with Etsy, what was the other thing they're, they're user friendly to create a listing, to get something up for sale, um, has changed over the years and they just keep trying to revamp and simplify and create that better for the seller and for the customer. Um, I feel like uh, if you just compare a, a few things by just being on, because I assume, I bet everybody's heard of Etsy here, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, just just the navigation of Etsy, I love. Um, I, just, I feel like the one thing I love about Etsy is they're always improving. It's not something, um, I guess eBay is a really good, uh, example, eBay still looks the same eBay. I don't sell on eBay, so I can't quite say that, but every time I get on eBay, it looks the same as 20 years ago. And it's sort of clunky, masculine, yeah. And confusing and yeah. Yeah. So I see Etsy, they're always moving forward. Um, I feel like they've always got this new plan ahead. Um, and I see that with other places, that's kind of what attracts me to other selling markets is how much they're moving forward, um, that what what's what information and support they're giving sellers, as well as how easy it is for the customer. How um, much how much do they usually take out? Is there like a percentage that they should expect to always have taken out when they sell on Etsy? So there's a, definitely if there's a fee of six point five for your whole um, the whole purchase, then there is a twenty cent listing fee. There is also another fee for a credit card. So um, I think it comes down to, of course, I have the math and they really, they just changed it like three weeks ago. Oh, so funny. I haven't done the new math for it. They really did. So they, um, but with Etsy, the cool thing about Etsy is you can, you can actually pay them to have ads. Um, you could pay them in, um, I think it's, it's Google ads and it's not very much. I think my, um, I'm trying to think my, I think I pay $2 in ads a day and I can Google right now. I'm selling birth flowers. People are loving my personalized birth flowers. I can Google it. And it's in the top Google search where it's immediate there. Etsy, when I'm looking for a product, Etsy is usually the first ad that I'm seeing on Google. So, um, you can definitely, uh, market your items with Etsy a little bit more than if you were doing it on your own or so, um, cool. so yeah, you basically say you go to Etsy, create yep. an account and you can actually say, yes, I want you to like promote. And so I'll, yep. you almost sign up for a subscription where every day you're paying X amount of dollars and they'll do the Google ads for you. Yep. That's so cool. I don't think I it's ever so knew easy. that existed. Yeah. So they've been doing that for a couple of years, but they're really pushing it more. Mm -hmm. Um, 
there's they definitely and they give you all the stats to it. That's another thing I love about Etsy is the back end, all the stats. You can find the stats for anything where your customers are coming from, your demographic, the age, where they're at. I just love the stats that they're giving because I would get lost and not be able to figure the, these things out where Etsy just just like right here. There it is. I feel like I that it. one, that one strategy right there actually is so key because a lot of people I think like, well, my Etsy shop is there and I'm just going to hope that somebody bites, but they don't come up with a marketing strategy, whether that's on Pinterest or, or whatever it is, their strategy is to get people there. So it's neat that you can actually tap into like almost budgeting. This is my marketing budget. I'm going to pay Etsy to market for me. And that way you don't have to, there's not as much front load for you to have to do that. I think that's awesome. So you kind of price your items that have overall between marketing and fees and credit card fees and all these different things. If that comes out to $3 per purchase, then I need to be pricing my item to at least this much to make a profit. And so I think there's, you kind of almost have to go backwards and figure out what your pricing is going to be based on all those other criteria. Is there a limit on how much or like how low you can go with the Google ads that you, that Etsy will sell? Is it just $2 a day or? Um, I think a dollar. I a think dollar? it goes, yeah, the dollar is the, is the lowest. Cool. Um, but they, <clears throat> Etsy's really promoting uh, free shipping too. So that's cool. an, another thing is I immediately offer free shipping and you add that into your price where yeah. the customer is paying for it. They're not seeing that. Um, but I think the value of it, um, they're seeing the value and Mm-hmm. I always add in the free shipping. As soon as they suggest that there are so many people still fighting that where they're like, I don't want to pay free shipping, but like Amazon proved to us that we love free shipping. Mm-hmm. And if you bake it into your pricing already, yep. you're not out any anymore. I think that's, yes. that's awesome. So how, how then uh, in other ways, I know that we kind of touched on Pinterest and I know that you use Pinterest. How do you use that to also drive other traffic to your, do you drive it to, to Etsy or do you drive it to your website? Cause I know you have a website, a personal website too. So my, my personal website's just kind of like a landing page mm-hmm. where it is now everybody, um, all my websites and are just there where you pick what you're looking to buy and then you go to the website. So all these website or all the, the links are just going to the different websites. Um, I, I personally think, um, I know I can definitely create a bigger website, but I just use these different websites and creating my own because they're taking care of all of the marketing things for me. And um, which I almost feel like it's working smarter because I, you can get lost in building a website too, but that's just for me personally. I feel like they're doing the work for me. Um, sorry. You have to repeat the question that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I took I was wondering about Pinterest. Is there, what are you, what, how much are you doing on Pinterest if anything? And what do you feel like that's effective? Sorry. I get so excited where I'm just like, Oh yeah, let's talk about all these fun things. And I'm like, Oh my goodness. No, so I love been, it. I, this is exactly what people are wanting. And thank you, Marjorie, for putting the fees in the chat for everybody that was wondering. Oh, she did. Awesome. Yeah. So those are all in the chat for everybody too. So Pinterest. Pinterest. Oh my gosh. That's a whole nother thing. I love Pinterest. So Pinterest, of course, is you create it once and it will show up in people's searches where like Instagram, Facebook, you lose it in your feed. Um, I don't know that I've ever searched like a Facebook for somebody else's ad. Um, so Pinterest is just, uh, it's literally like my second Google. It's my search engine that I'm looking for things. I'm looking for ideas, inspiration. And then I know customers are doing the same thing. So once I put Pinterest again, I make one ad and it just keeps, um, circulating, which I love. Uh, Pinterest is coming out with new cool things too, where it's, they're doing the, um, what do they call it? It's not an ad Pinterest. Oh my goodness. It's the, like the videos. So they're trying to do like a TikTok thing. The reels. Um, Yeah. The reels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I believe just having like a a cool photo of what you do or a video of what you do, pin ideas thing or idea pins. Thank you. (laughs) Um, of, of what I'm creating. And it is, um, that I'm trying to get, think of like what I do with a, a regular ad is, Say for instance, I just do a video and I have a cover photo. 
And again, with Pinterest, you can see all the stats, which is really cool of what's what people are really loving and liking. Um, and then in two weeks, I can go with that same exact ad that people are loving, change the cover photo or add some different text. Um, I just feel like you can't do that with Instagram. You don't put the same ad like three times in a row, but with Pinterest, you can. You can create a variety of these ads and, you're rec and you can also recognize what kind of marketing, even colors, even text, the information that you're putting really can draw in your customers. Um, I think it's a great tool. It's definitely like my top three that I use every single day is Pinterest. So when you say you do ads, are you also doing regular pins and idea pins? And then you're also doing like Pinterest ads. Is, is, are you, is that specifically what you're saying that you do is you, you promote it, you pay, do paid ads on Pinterest? So I have done paid ads and I shouldn't say paid ad. I shouldn't say ads. I should just say pins because really I have, I think I've only done a handful of paid ads. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying ads like, because it's a pin. So I should just say pin. Okay. Okay. But I just wanted to clarify. Just, that a, pin, like just a regular that. pin is, um, mm -hmm. as, as soon as I get it up, I can see like the traffic it's bringing in. Um, Etsy is another thing. They're showing you where your traffic is coming from, um, which Pinterest is definitely showing up and it's, it's showing in all my social media platforms. Pinterest is definitely the one I put more in time into because it's uh, recycling. Um, my ads customers are always looking and um, it's just, I feel like if you're going to put any time and effort into, into social media, that one's, that one's it. And it, some people don't really call it social media, but I personally feel like that one's my favorite. <laughs> I agree. And I actually did a workshop in December all about Pinterest because it's, it's an, it's a good, it's a, it's a search engine, like you said, and not necessarily a social media platform. And so I think a lot of people think like, oh my goodness, it's just another social media thing I need to be on. But if you post on Instagram or Facebook, it lives and dies in a day. But if you post it on Pinterest, it lives and breathes for months and it can continue to recycle. And one piece of content you can really create 10 pins for and I'll have them be just slightly different, but it all leads to the same place. And it just lives and breathes and keeps going for you. It, and, it, and as long as your keywords are optimized, you're using keywords that people are actually searching, like, you know, coloring page for kids, animal coloring page or whatever it is that you have. I think that makes a huge difference in having your, your content pop up to that person. Like, Oh, you're searching for this. Uh, this happens to match all the keywords that you just typed in. And so, I don't know, I agree with you. I think Pinterest, I could go on and on, but I think Pinterest mm -hmm. is one of the best, especially if you have an online store, because that's what it, what, what it does best with either freebies or online stores, I think do the best on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I love oh. Pinterest. It's genius. I love that. So do you, how much time out of curiosity, do you feel like you spend on Pinterest every day or week? <laughs> <laughs> for, for business, for, for your business. Like, <laughs> not, <in> not <laughs> so I actually, I'm always thinking of my business <laughs> and my creativeness. Sometimes like it's hard to put an hour limit on that, <laughs> but definitely I would say at least an hour and an hour a day or an hour a week, an hour. Oh, an hour a day, <laughs> maybe three hours a day. I, I wonder if they track it. I wonder if there's a way for you to track it. Like how many times are you opening the app? <laughs> but I, well, I guess you can track it actually. Um, for business, I definitely am on there at least an hour. I, um, I have a morning routine where I'll do work. I'll work out. And guess what's on at like immediately. I always think I need a multitask where I'm just like, okay, I'm working out. I got to be inspired. I'm going to find some cool things I'm going to work on soon. Or um, like, like just more education things. And I just feel like Pinterest is always there. So really, I think if, if I checked, it would probably be definitely like almost two hours, but it's leisure and it's fun and it's work. So mm -hmm. It's definitely one of like my, I should say like my top tool. <laughs> I love that. I think that's awesome. And I think that some, for everybody that's getting overwhelmed, like, oh my goodness, if I'm going to be effective on Etsy, I have to be on Pinterest for three hours a day. Don't stress. No, no. <laughs> um, I do think that, that even investing even a couple hours every week will help you to better optimize your Etsy store or your online store. 
And I think an hour a day is awesome, especially if that's already part of your morning, morning routine. And you can also go to Etsy and buy some Canva templates for pins. Mm -hmm. If you're really stressed about creating pins, by the way, so you don't have to create all these yourself. So that's cool. I do that. I I do. Oh, ads are so fun. And I love these ads or pins. Sorry. I love pins and I want to do more, but then I think I get so lost where creating it from scratch and I get so inspired. I'm like, these people have it all perfect and it's lovely. And I just, I see it as like creative people helping out creative people really. So I, I definitely have been buying some templates, which I love. I I freaking love that you do that. That's so awesome. (laughs) But I also want to sell some where I'm just like, Ooh, there's some templates that are missing and some, some cool marketing strategies that are missing in the templates that I haven't found. So I just, I definitely am inspired by other creatives. Cool. So how would you, I know that you use, you use holidays and coupons very strategically. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that and how you use that to boost sales in your shop? So I have, I definitely do coupons with uh, like returning customers or um, abandoned shopping cart coupons. Etsy really pushes some really cool ideas they almost guide you into those things where it's not like oh I need to start marketing things they really take a look into your your cells and see what's lacking and really help what what you should do and so um every once in a while you'll get like a little reminder of this is coming up you should set, have a cell or these coupons are being very are very effective um like the abandoned cart coupons and it doesn't even have to be very much it's really like uh, 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 the good thing about that is it's sending your customer once it's in your cart um, it's sending that customer like she's offering you a 10% which I do I only do a 10% discount um, and it's just reminding them again that it's there so the coupons with Etsy the holidays they're going to tell you what's coming up um, they definitely have a, a calendar of the cool uh, um different cells that they're doing. I think, I feel like they really only do like five major cells um, a year, but they are letting you know within months, then weeks, and then letting you, they're pretty much guiding you how to set that up so quickly. But I, there is one thing that I do with um, holiday products. So I don't create a ton of holiday products. I look for an evergreen product. They don't have to keep changing or, switching like I do have a lot of Christmas things in my shop but I don't create them as much anymore maybe I do a little bit here and there but I see more items that are selling all year round um say for instance like a quote saying like you got this somebody's gonna buy it for Christmas but it doesn't have to be Christmassy so I really look for evergreen products and I don't just do holiday things um holiday sales yes um, like you were asking, but I just wanted to like clarify. Yeah. Some people are like, oh, they spend like so many months on just doing their holidays. I used to do calendars. I still kind of do a little bit of calendars. Now I do no dated calendars because you keep selling those. If you, but like my 2022 calendars, I spent um, a week making, they're not, they're not going to sell past February. So I really see like finding that product that is not associated with um, an exact holiday, but of course they're, you're promoting them during that holiday too. I've seen that as a, a better way where, where I'm creating that one thing, selling it forever and not just selling it in one season. But again, that is a good thing too, where you're selling it over and over um, each season or each year yeah. too. And your birth like hours it. are a good example because they're, mm-hmm. they're selling a ton for Mother's Day that just passed but they're not necessarily Mother's Day. It doesn't say Mother's Day on them, but they a lot of people want them because that's a really fun gift to give to moms. Yeah, I'm always looking when I when I start finding a new idea. I'm like, will this sell all year round? And um, how can I create it? Um, I have this this phrase of like, if I'm going to personalize it, it's personalized for more profit. So I keep thinking that if I'm going to personalize something, put more time and effort into it, the profit is going to be like five, six times than what it would be, even 10 times of what it would be if like you got this quote Mm -hmm. would be. 
Yeah, that's really cool. So I know some people here have Etsy shops and maybe they're wondering why they're not effective or how to boost them. What would be your, your tips and tricks to like, what if you were going to look at somebody's Etsy shop to almost do an audit, what would you look for and to give them tips on how to better, better optimize it? So I would definitely look at how many listings there are and the categories. If they're selling 15 different items from 15 different categories, I would definitely have that person focus in and create something, the, the thing that they love the most and create varieties of that to be specific. Um, I feel like customers come to your shop and they if they see a little too chaotic, which I've done this and I've seen this, where I'm like, oh my goodness. And even some of the things in my Etsy shop, I'm like, I, maybe I should open another shop and sell this thing over here. Or maybe it, I'm confusing the customer. If you're thinking maybe I'm confusing the customer, you are confusing the customer. I have seen so many Etsy shops where it's like, I'm gonna try this and I'm gonna try that. And trying is definitely a good idea, but I feel like having it in your Etsy shop, you should really try to find one category um, and go with that where you're definitely creating varieties of this one item. You're going to find what sells great and you're going to keep continuing to find um, more varieties of these things the, the more work you put into it. I feel like with um, an Etsy shop, when you first look at it, you really want to see if it's uh, cohesive if and, and not chaotic. Like it would be like you're really walking into an actual store. Like mm -hmm. if you, if this became an actual store, how much would you love going in? Or would you turn around? Um, there are definitely some things of not to do and things that to do when it comes to Etsy shop. Another thing I love about Etsy is they, and of course, Pinterest too, they play together. They, there's so many things, tutorials. There's so many things of how to create um, at your shop or what to do in your downtime when, when your shop is slow, what to do when your shop is slow, um, what to do if you're not getting the sales there. And I'm learning from, from all of these too. I always feel like I need to keep learning. Like SEO always changes. There's always new trends there. So for me to like stay five years back would not do anything good for me. I am always continuing learning the new trends and the new words, the new, mm -hmm. um, Oh, keywords, what's happening. What, so, um, for me, if I would go in and audit an Etsy shop, I would definitely look at the number of listings. Um, you don't need fancy banners. You don't need fancy. I used to think I needed to, and I took some down and I'm like, Oh my goodness, my cells are just the same where I would stress about, Oh, I need to have this perfect thing. You do need to create a, a shop name. And I know that can be stressful or, or change, um, that, throughout the years because mine did I actually have changed my my shop name a few times and that's okay it's like rebranding you're mm -hmm. you're definitely creating um you're you're more like concentrating on on um more getting more clear I'm sorry that's yeah. that's the word it's getting clear so would you say that like when you said that the the banner doesn't need to be fancy are you talking about like the banner of your shop or are you talking about like the banner like the thumbnails for each of your items both. So the banner of your shop is what I was talking about. And then mm -hmm. definitely that's a good point is, is your cover photo with Etsy. Um, I used to do fancy lifestyle, big fancy photos. And now I'm just back to down to just one same picture frame. And I love how it's just, to me, I feel like I can like, it's like a sigh of relief where I go in there and I'm not like, oh my gosh, where do I look? Where do I look? It's just like, Oh, everything I, the, my art is the focus and it's not the photo behind it. Mm -hmm. um, I use stock photos. I don't take pictures of my art. I don't take individual pictures. I think it's working smarter again, mm -hmm. um, where I know like if you painted a piece of, um, if you painted art, you are going to need to take a picture of it. But if, if you are doing digitals, I use, I definitely use, yeah, yeah, seriously, frame models, our life. I, I have so many, I'm like, I wish. So and tell us more for those that don't know what a frame mock-up is. How do they, how do they create a frame mock-up? So it's, a, it's just a stock photo, um, mm -hmm. a mock-up photo. So it's really just, mm -hmm. I literally have just a frame that I love. That's a neutral wood color frame with a light color background. 
and I overlay my my graphic or my art on top of it. Um, so it just looks like I framed it on the wall and took a picture. But there so are go people. To. So you go to like Unsplash, for example, like a stock photo mm -hmm. place, look for frames and then one that doesn't have anything in it that you really love. And then you put your product on top of it. Yeah. Awesome. So Etsy is huge. I love Etsy mm -hmm. for that. So I, I buy my stock photos from Etsy, from Creative Market. Um, I, there, Canva has them. Canva already has them ready for you to mm -hmm. use. So there's definitely, there's a huge there's a huge outlet of that. And that could be something you can sell. Like people are making mm -hmm. really good money off of stock photos. Would you mind if I shared a picture of yours? Jamie oh, yeah. found an example of what we're talking about here. And I want to show them what, what it looks like. So this is her art, but then here's the stock photo frame mm -hmm. that she dropped her art onto. Awesome. Yes. So cool. And that sells. I thought like, look at this yeah. 15, thousand or 15,000, 1500 reviews. <laughs> so I love that. So if I'm hearing you right, then with, if you were going to audit a shop that it should have one, maybe two categories and not a ton and maybe create multiple different shops that have different kinds of things. So if I'm hearing you right, if I was walking into an art store, I don't want to see tools, art and baby items. I want to see, you know, we want to see what we've come to see and then maybe create your tool store and your baby item store. So is that what yes. I'm hearing? Yes, definitely work. Um, I found, I think I get to a point where I'm like, ooh, this is still digital and this is still mm -hmm. the same category. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely feel that there is certain things that don't belong together and so many things that do belong together. Um, and, and over the years, you'll see, you'll see that change and you'll see that you'll get more clear about it. What are some um, category examples? Like what are the categories that, that you use? So my categories in my shop are my digital downloads. Um, people are really loving the birth flower prints. So they have their own category now too, even though they are a print or a digital mm -hmm. download, mm -hmm. I'm giving it their own space. Um, I do sell graphics. I sell patterns and I sell fonts and I sell, um, I used to sell a lot of stationery, but I've just mm -hmm. turned it into digital now. So cool. instead of making it, I'm just selling it a digital stationery, digital cards, digital planners. So with these, I'm going to share your shop again. Would these be considered your, your categories over here? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So uh -huh. do you have more than one shop or do you have just one shop? I just have one shop on Etsy. That's cool. Yeah, every, I think I'm like, Ooh, should I open another one? But I just, I really have to get back to simplifying where I'm like, is, is this, I, I need to simplify. I think that's really like one of the major things that I do every single day is I overcomplicate everything and I got to come right back and I got, and I need to see, okay, I need to simplify this. Why am I making this so difficult? Do I need just another variety of it? Um, and I, I just know I am always editing and simplifying on everything I'm doing. Awesome. That's so great. I, I have just a few more, few more questions and I have, I'm have them over here, which is why my, my eyes keep turning over here for those that, um, that want to get into the space, you know, what is, what is a, if they want it to be effective, how, what is the minimum time requirement that they should probably put into their shop? Uh, especially there's a lot of setup in the beginning, but what would be maybe an ongoing realistic time investment each week to make a successful shop? Yeah, after you put in, because you are going to put in a lot of time and effort in the beginning, but after, say, after you have your hundred listings of your, the different things that you're, you're wanting to sell, um, you're going to find varieties of those and you're going to want to keep going. But for me personally, I have, this is my full-time job, mm -hmm. full-time plus job. It's not part-time for me anymore, where um, it's sometimes it was a little bit of a part-time job, but I have been doing this for so long. This is just full-time job. So for me, it's definitely been 40 hours, but then there's times where things are slow and my season of relaxing and refilling my cup and, um, Christmas, like there are different, different holidays where I'm like, I get to relax. And I, that's what I love is it's like, I'm only going to do 10 hours of work this week, but to keep an Etsy shop going, there is definitely some rules with Etsy where you always need to reply to a customer email. They now have like some new things where, um, some new stats that they really want you to reply to them within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So there's always something 
Um, and it's kind of, it's courteous. Like you really, you would do that to, um, if a customer actually came into a store, <laughs> you wouldn't ignore them for two, 24 hours anyway, but you, um, there are a few rules where you immediately need to get back to them. You get to set your own timeline of when you're getting, when you're shipping things out. Um, so there's some rules that you really do need to follow, but I would say consistently to keep adding things into your shop, especially when you're just starting and this is just part-time for you, at least 10 hours, set aside 10 hours of, um, of I would say of, of listing, this is included in listing. I would think three hours of that 10 hours would be listing, three hours of that would be creating. Um, and the one hour would be, would be marketing. Um, I, there, so we're missing a couple hours. So maybe, um, I, there's a, I think marketing with um, finding inspiration definitely should be a, a few hours also. Um, but I think it's a fun, it sounds like a fun 10 hours to me anyway. <laughs> I love that. And actually Patty asked a question earlier on. She said, how are you learning the new SEO stuff? When you mentioned that kind of staying back five years ago with SEO, you're always staying up on trends. Well, explain what that means for people here who may not know basic SEO. So SEO, of course, is always changing. They, they should come out with a new acronym, <laughs> like constantly changing as well. Mm -hmm. um, Etsy does an awesome job with telling you what's going on, what's changing, what the keywords are, the, the, the they call it a forecast trend. So they're showing you the things as well as telling you the things. And then Pinterest is another tool I use, um, how finding that. I, another thing that I love and I haven't mentioned it yet is Google Trends. I trend or I I am always looking for a new trend and a, the market gaps. So I go to Google Trends when I'm seeing like birth flowers. I Googled it like a year and a half ago where or sorry, put it in Google Trends. I didn't just Google. So I put it in Google Trends like a year and a half ago and it was just starting to go up. And then every six months, it's I probably check it more than six months. Um, you just see the trend keep going up. So um, that's another tool I use when I am onto something where thinking, ooh, I haven't seen many of these around, or I really love the style of this, or I found a new life hack, um, or but the world is missing this. Um, just different inspiration. I will definitely plug it into Google Trend and see where it's selling. They come out with all the keywords also, what people are searching for the keywords people are using. So that's another thing I haven't mentioned is Google Trends is definitely one of the things that I I go to with one of my ideas. And then if I, I see it's too saturated, I'm going to see that. I'm going to see that on Pinterest. I'm going to see it on Etsy. I'm going to see it on Google Trends. The trend is starting to go down because it's already been saturated. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to find that sweet spot of like the, the incline. Do you mind if I share my screen and go into Google Trends so people yeah, can get a too. visual and you can walk yeah. us through like what you would do? So what is something you might search here? So trends.google.com is where you're going, everybody. So what would you, when you're searching to see if it's oversaturated or not, what would you type in here? So let's try stickers. So stickers is a good example of something that might be on a huge trend again, or oh, it's totally staying neutral, which is cool. Okay, so maybe that's not a great one. You could do birth flowers. Should you do birth flowers? Uh-huh. So where something that I'm going to be changing or putting my time and effort into. So I, I've done this. I just did this just recently where I'm thinking, mm. yeah, that Mother's Day mountain up there. Right so on I, my, May 1st about. <laughs> <laughs> so I see. And of course, it's natural that it's, you know, that you're going to see your gift giving season. But with, um, and of course, it's Utah. <laughs> it's like, hey. That's so funny. Um, so uh, another thing too, is when I go up to compare it, cause Zodiacs and horoscopes are, are, they have been, I feel like they've come and gone and they've come back. Um, I remember even in high school, horoscopes were really cool. Everybody wanted to know your sign. And um, I feel like that has come and gone but it's staying consistent. So then um, when I'm thinking, oh, what am, I, what am I gonna do for my next project? Should I put some more effort into birth flowers or should I put some more effort into zodiacs? Should I put some more effort into, um, another one would be like 
birthstones would be uh, these are all kind of personalized but you can create them and they don't have to be personalized so this is kind of what i would do to focus in on my next project so zodiacs look like they need some some love <laughs> and i need to start thinking <clears throat> of some more projects of zodiac but google trends is this is what people are searching for. And I think if you go down a little bit, it will start showing you the keywords that people are using. Baby breath flowers. Yep. And you love that breakout word. You definitely want to see that breakout and that, you know, the percentages are super high for these things. Um, and for everybody who doesn't know how to use these keywords, when you are on, on Pinterest, for example, and you're creating a pin, you want to copy this. You want to copy baby breath flowers, if that's actually what you've drawn a picture of, if, what, if it relates to what you're doing, or January birthstone, and put it into the description of mm -hmm. your pin so that when people type into Pinterest or Google, it will bring up your your content so that's how you're you're actually copying and pasting a lot of these long word long keywords if they apply to your topic by the way they have to actually apply to what you're doing yeah there's some that i'm like huh what's yeah, what's <laughs> these are all these are all free things and, and i feel like you can pay a lot of money in searching and finding exactly what you need you can pay somebody else to do it too uh, but these are to get started. These are all free um, resources, Pinterest and Google Trends, where it's, there, it's really important information to get started with. But I do love. Do you that. use this one? Answer the public. No. no, I'm like, what do you do? Fun stuff. This is another one. So let's okay. let's do That's like so cool. horoscopes, um, for example. You would type in here, and you can see what what it gives you. Basically, a bunch of keywords that you can use to make sure your your content shows up to people so these are the keywords again that you would type into into google or into um i love into that your, into right your now. pen so look at this so it's like um free uh, let's see yeah so like uh when did horoscope start so maybe like if you were creating a download a free mm -hmm. pdf download or something these give you words like phrases that you can use like how horoscopes can trick you or um, what horoscopes are compatible? Like these would be, that would be an awesome thing to create a piece of content for, you know, that kind of stuff. So this is another resource. Keywords I love everywhere. this. Keywords everywhere is another one. So if I just Google um, I horoscopes. I've, yeah, I've heard keywords. I love keywords everywhere. So I have this other Chrome extension downloaded here that will show me the same things. Like it will show me different keywords, like horoscope signs, and it tell me how many people are searching it. So yeah, anyway, that was a whole long tangent on keywords, but it's it's helpful when you have a shop and you're trying to drive traffic to it. I know, that's awesome. I love it. And that this is, I love um, that you don't have to have it all figured out. You're, mm -hmm. I'm learning from you already today, all these cool things that's going to change my business. But <laughs> that's, that's the thing is like, you're always evolving and growing and you don't have to have it all figured out when you first think, oh, I have to have, I have yeah. to know what I'm doing to open an Etsy shop. Guess what? You don't. Totally. And I love that you said that because after every this, I don't want everybody to be like, okay, now I've got to go figure out my, mm -hmm. my pins and I've got to figure out my keywords. I've got to figure out my shop name and I got to figure out my, my what I'm going to sell. Like just start with mm -hmm. creating a hundred listings, things that you want to sell and then start there. And then that, once you do that, then the rest, you can kind of grow from there. And I think that that's, if I take here from you, it's taking that mm -hmm. one start, start yeah. there and then build these other things into it. Yeah, if you think you had it figured out and you know exactly what you're doing, that you know, I guess that's cool. <laughs> that's that's awesome you did. <laughs> but in reality, I just think I'm like, yeah, it's kind of like motherhood. Like, you, oh, you got it figured out. <laughs> you kind of laugh at you're like, no, you don't. But that's what I feel like. So many people get stuck on what am I going to name this? What am I going to sell? And really, what it is is find your strengths of what you love to do. What do you want to put some time and effort into and go with that? Don't think I got to create it just like this person's shop and I need to do this exactly how they're doing to be successful. That is not true. And that person could tell you that same thing too. Um, I feel like we just immediately run and shut down and, and not start because of those silly answers and, and things we're telling our head, uh, we're telling ourselves that it's just too hard or too much or not possible. And it's, 
I go through that too. And I know because I personally go through that and say that to myself where it's just like, do you know, I just need to try or um, you get better. You get a little bit better every single day. I love that. So before we close today, I'd love to know in the chat, is there anything, any burning questions that you all have here as you're, you're exploring getting on, on Etsy creative market or anything on this topic that we can ask John day before we, before we jump off for, for the day. And anything else, John Day, that we didn't talk about? They're like, you know what? We didn't even get to talk about this. I think we should make sure we mention it. I am starting a group where we can talk about things. Etsy, I have a lot of people that want to pick my brain about Etsy. Um, I've seen it evolve and change. Mm -hmm. And if you can definitely find me on, if you go to jandaysummer.com, all my social media platforms are there. I personally like Facebook more than um any other one I you can find me on Facebook that's where I would like where I would create a group where we can um share and talk and there are many groups out there already but feel free to message me feel free to ask questions I'm and if I don't know we'll figure it out together which I I, that's what I love, you know, the internet for. So if people want to work with you, because I know that everyone is probably thinking, oh my goodness, if I could just sit down and show her what I've started and get, and figure out what's missing, do you, um, and totally don't feel like you have to say yes to this because I'm just putting you on the spot. Do you offer any consultations like paid consults or any, um, audits of people's Etsy shops? And, and is that something that you'd be open to? Absolutely. So I don't have set prices or it's not something that um, I have like it's for sale and you can go buy it right now. It's message me on Etsy. You definitely can message me on Etsy. That helps too. Etsy, Facebook, but I am creating a course to really start that, that spark of what to start with or how to get started on Etsy, how to keep going, how to stay creative. Um, that is in the works within the next couple of months. And I want to create a community where we can talk about this. Um, there are already many Facebook groups of like 10, 20, 30,000 followers or, and it gets too, too much and you're not heard where I like, where it is a little bit smaller and um, uh, the answers are getting, or uh, questions are actually getting answered and, and uh, taking a look at personal things, uh, like personal pages where you can, I haven't found that yet on other, other sites. Yeah. Two yeah. questions that just came in. Um, mm -hmm. Amy says, so if you only have a few items to sell, is it not worth it to start an Etsy shop yet? No, get that shop opened because it starts with two. You can't just put in a hundred within a few minutes. You're going to start with two in the first place. Just keep going with that keep going, thinking to this week, I'm going to add two more items. I'm going to add two more items in one day or two days. It kind of depends on what you're, what you're making. If you're painting a, a masterpiece, it's going to take some time. But if you're doing just a, your new favorite quote that you found, um, because you think other people should hear or see it, if you're writing out poems or um, drawing graphics, I feel like that's where you start. You start with two. And then you get four and then you get six. So you definitely get it going. Open up that Etsy shop, learn all the rules, learn the things that you really need to pay attention to. Um, but it does, it starts with two for sure. So they, they could start with two and then it yep. wouldn't hurt their shop at all. Is there, so there's not really a minimum number that you would recommend no. to have in your shop before you begin? No, you can just open your shop. You don't even have to have an item in there yet. Okay, cool. Patty also asked, how much of this applies to selling original non-digital art, or do you think? So I think she's asking, how does this apply mm -hmm. to people who are not just doing digital products, but they selling actually on, draw or art? Yeah, selling on Etsy, I definitely believe. Um, with, with like painting or drawing originals, um, I feel Etsy is definitely the place to be selling those anyway. Uh, you definitely want to take some good photos once you do have your, your art finished. Um, lighting is key, of course. Um, show details on that. People are loving the videos that Etsy is offering. Um, things that are non-digital, non it's still the place to be. Um, you can turn that into digital though. <laughs> you can create your original artwork and, and digitize it and um, create more with that. 
Yeah, here's an example okay. just as a quick screenshot. <clears throat> like if you just type in watercolor paintings, mm -hmm. these are all things that people drew, but they digitized it. So you can actually purchase it and she's digitized it so you can have multiple, mm -hmm. so anybody can now have it. So yeah, these are things somebody actually drew that you can purchase. Like, I love these, by the way, the ones of homes. Mm -hmm. I want to get one of my house. Yeah, awesome. Any other final questions before we, we jump off? Long story short, we want to make sure that you know how to work with Jande if she if you would like more support. It sounds like she's thinking of creating a Facebook group for everybody to collaborate in. She's open to doing consults with you and auditing your shops and helping you to figure out how to get started one-on-one -on -one and be on the lookout for a course from her as she puts all of this together. So we really appreciate you sharing your, your wisdom with us. I, tell us in the chat, everybody, if you found value from this call and if you feel inspired to go create your own shop or to up-level an existing one. Amy says, thank you so much. And yes, thank you. <laughs> we appreciate everyone saying, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So tickled to have you. And we're, it was fun to sh share your wisdom. I want to go create an Etsy shop now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye.